Hi everyone and welcome back to Sonia's Prep. In this week's video, I'll share with you all of my go-to Thanksgiving recipes. We aren't so traditional with all of the recipes as you'll see because we don't do turkey. I know it's a big um, contention with certain people, but we don't do turkey. We do a little th uh, things different, but I hope you guys will enjoy all of these recipes for our mains, our sides, and our desserts. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Sonia, and I share here on my channel about my orthodox jewish life and i do my best to share tips and tricks on how to ma manage the many things that we have on our plates and if you enjoy this type of content don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up so our family's take on Thanksgiving with the guidance of our Orthodox rabbi is that it's a day to just get together with loved ones. As Jewish people, we do have a Thanksgiving meal every Shabbat, as you see here on my channel with all of my preps. But more than that, we offer thanks to God each and every single day through prayer and action. We just mostly use this day when most of us are off of work to cook up cozy fall inspired recipes. So let's roll up our sleeves and let's get prepping. So let's get started with what I got from Aldi. Everything that you see here up until and including the bread is everything that I got from Aldi. So they actually have kosher bread, which is pretty, pretty cool. It's a sign for them. This is what I'm gonna be making my stuffing with. I got these red skin potatoes as well. These Macintosh apples, celery they also had, um, carton of eggs, these kiwis. My kids are absolutely obsessed with kiwis lately. They'll all be gone in one shot. <laughs> these little baby potatoes that are multicolored that I'm going to be making my smashed potatoes with. These acorn squashes that I'm going to be decorating the table with. These different um, zucchinis and squashes I'm going to be making the stuffed vegetables with. Mushrooms, I believe in the stuffing. I have to put mushrooms, so I just bought those. The mini peppers are going into the stuffed uh, vegetable dish. These peppers are just good for salads and to have on hand. I got these cranberries that I'm going to be putting into my apple cran cranberry crumble. And believe it or not, I have never ever had Brussels sprouts in my entire life. So I got a package of these just to try them out. All of this, guys, leave in the comments down below what you think I spent on everything here. Now from the bread going on, is from another supermarket that I'm close to. So I got these big carrots just because I ran out of them um, in my house. These um, Israeli cucumbers, these tomatoes I'm also gonna be using to stuff the vegetables with. I got some corn that I'm gonna be putting an herb, herb butter um, glaze over the top with some garlic and different herbs, gonna be delicious. Lettuce, cause we always have salad in the house. Um, these herbs, this this is the richest whipping cream. This is the non-dairy topping that I use for my cakes and everything. This is the par, which is dairy-free cream cheese that I'm gonna be using in some of my baking. So that is it for the shopping haul. I do have a few things already in the house that I didn't need to buy. So drum roll for how much I spent. The Aldi's receipt. Uh, so I think it's a pretty good over there considering that all vegetables and fruits and eggs and everything is up. So I think that's pretty good. And the other supermarket total came out to $39.72. Okay, so today is Wednesday night and I decided to make my sourdough today just to get that out of the way. It is currently about 8 o'clock in the evening. My sourdough starter has you know proofed and developed and now I'm making the dough so um, by 11 o'clock it'll be all fluffy and I'll leave it out to rise overnight if you've never seen my sourdough uh, video and the recipe and the whole process I'll have cards up above and links to it down below once you try it it becomes very addictive and I just love it I can't not make it I've gone a few weeks without making it and then it's just like oh, I need to have it again so I'm gonna be making that right now 
so now that the sourdough making for the most part is all done, we're gonna get started on some yummy desserts and side dishes. All right, so I created a whole menu plan, obviously, because I wanted to just organize myself and see what I wanted to do when. So today we're gonna concentrate on doing the sourdough, which you already saw me do, and we're gonna do some desserts. So I have these doughs that I put into the freezer. If you've seen my previous Shabbat prep video where I made babka from scratch, these, this is the dough recipe. Uh, it's very simple to make, comes together very quickly. I made a batch that produces three different doughs. I used one, the rest I froze. So now all I have to do is just whip it out of the freezer. I defrosted it and I'm gonna make with the same dough some delicious cinnamon rolls. I think it'll go really well with the Thanksgiving theme. And um, like I keep saying, we're not so, so traditional with Thanksgiving. I don't know if it's really traditional at all to have cinnamon rolls, but I wanted to make it, they'll be dairy free and also oh delicious. So let's get into it. I should probably flour my surface. So I flour my surface just a bit. This dough is really, really heaven to work with also. It's so nice. And I'm just going to roll this dough out a little bit and keep it as uniform as possible. My apron is shedding. that my dough kept it as uniform as possible the next step is to basically lather it on with some uh, dairy free butter if you so choose if you don't keep milk and meat separate then obviously you could use real butter in this step and this just go is going to provide and this is just going to provide a lot of moistness and ooey gooeyness to this dish so lather that on that timer that you just heard it's just a sign to me to do a little stretch and fold for my sourdough bread. Sourdough really seems so um, overwhelming and tedious because people tell you there's times to do everything, but nothing's gonna happen if you're gonna be a late to some stuff. So the next thing that I'm going to put on is brown sugar and cocoa powder. I keep my brown sugar, just a helpful tip, in a jar with some large marshmallows. It prevents it from getting hard. So place in a nice amount of brown sugar over the top. I'm gonna make it all nice and sticky. After that, I place in some cinnamon. Put in as much or as little as you like. I also like cocoa powder in my cinnamon rolls. I don't know if you guys do. Let me know if you guys add any cocoa powder when you make your cinnamon rolls. Just feel like it adds a nice chocolatey layer. Then a little bit of regular sugar as well. And I don't really have measurements to all of this, as you can tell. I just do it uh, until it covers the entire surface. So now we flip and roll. Look how gorgeous that looks. So into this uh, glass container, I'm gonna put in a little bit of the dairy-free butter just to glaze it so that nothing sticks. You could spray some um, oil spray if you prefer, whatever you guys like. Okay. Now I cut them up pretty thick.
cleaning up my work surface and we're gonna get started on the second batch of dough and I'm gonna keep this one just with the cinnamon sugar so no chocolate so for whoever just likes it you know the traditional cinnamon flavor that's what they'll get plop the dough over put some flour on our rolling pin and roll it out again this dough is so so good so again i'm just gonna put in a nice amount of butter down smearing all of that so where's my spoon where did my spoon get oh, here it is okay so adding in a bunch of brown sugar spread this out and of course the cinnamon Gonna stretch it out so it could be nice and even on all sides. We don't need you anymore. And roll it up. And if you're having a difficult time rolling it, I use something like this to just help me. I think I'm going to rearrange how I sorted this because I want it to be one side chocolate and one side regular. We have one odd one out. It's okay. Here are the regular cinnamon. You think they'll all fit? I don't know. smush them in here okay now I'm just gonna leave all this to um, to rise and we're gonna check back on it in about 45 minutes and then we're gonna bake it I love these Pyrex containers they come with covers I don't have to like waste plastic wrap or anything like that so this is going off to the side to rise and if you remember my sourdough was beeping and I needed to do a stretch and fold, so we're gonna do that right now. I'm gonna give my hands a quick rinse. It's actually preferable that your hands are a little wet and damp. So I'm gonna just stretch it and fold it. It's gonna take less than a minute and that's it. We are done with this that to the side as well so now that we've got the cinnamon rolls done as well as the sourdough we're going to be moving on to what's next on my list the apple tate tatan i don't know why i can never say that um if this is Ina garden's recipes i love her recipes she's so amazing it looked really really great so let's go and do this but first clean up time So the apple tea tan is composed of two separate layers. You basically layer on in, layer it on into a pie pan um, with caramelized apples with caramel sauce, and then you make the actual cake. So I'm gonna show. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna make our own caramel. So super easy. All you need to do is put in one cup of sugar, 
a third cup of water and um, she recommends to use a candy thermometer just to make sure that you're not gonna burn it and it's supposed to reach 360 degrees Fahrenheit so let's put that on so here is our sugar and water and while this is going to come to temperature to 300 where's the fahrenheit that's so the top is the hair fahrenheit so it's supposed to come to 360. while that's happening we're going to cut up our apples these are granny smith apples so i'm just going to be peeling it with a peeler and i have this cute handy dandy apple slicer that i got for rosh hashanah so that'll make it very very easy to slice Oops, I forgot one strip. You guys hear that sizzling? That's the sugar. I'm gonna go quickly check on that. Oh, it's perfect. So this is gonna core it and slice it at the same time. I actually never use this. My kids use it all the time. Oh, oh, that's so cool. Awesome. And the core comes right out. I'm gonna slice it in half because it feels like it's a little too thick. Now is the time to beautifully assemble the apples. Okay, we got all of the apples in. Now we're just gonna wait for our caramel to reach 360 degrees. As you can see, we're almost there and you can see the change in the sugar right around around the rim of it is getting nice and caramelized and brown so it's almost there so if you guys don't have a candy thermometer this is basically what you're looking you're looking for the sugar to dissolve and for it to start to turn to this deep brown caramel color but we're almost there All right, here we go. We're shutting off the fire, bringing that over, pouring it into the apples. Wow, how gorgeous. Just make caramel. So with the paddle attachment, we're going to be adding in six tablespoons of butter or any kind of dairy replacement butter that you like and enjoy and three fourths cup of sugar. We're gonna blend all that up. To that then, I added in two whole eggs and beat that as well. The recipe also calls for a third cup of sour cream. I just used the Tofuri cream cheese that you saw in my grocery haul and I added in one tablespoon of vanilla inside of the mix. Don't forget to scrape down the bowl to incorporate everything. I added in one cup plus two tablespoons of flour, a fourth of a teaspoon of salt, and half of a teaspoon of baking powder, and we're gonna give that all a mix. The batter is perfectly smooth and looks incredible. Now we're just gonna place that right on top of the apples. I 
The cake is all done. I'm gonna place it into a 350 degree preheated oven and we're gonna check back when it's all ready. These are our gorgeous cinnamon rolls. My husband, who is actually the baker of the family, <laughs> just gave me a great idea to actually just close them up and leave them in the fridge until I get back from work tomorrow and bake them so they're nice and fresh for the actual day instead of baking it now and serving it two days from now. <laughs> So the cake has been in the oven for 30 minutes and it is perfectly done. I tested it with a toothpick and I'm gonna just let it cool off. I'm gonna cover it with a tea towel actually and flip it over tomorrow when I get back from work. So to recap very quickly, we have our sourdough bread. I'm gonna leave this overnight so it's gonna proof and become really nice and big. I laid out these sourdough bannetons with the covers that I'm going to take care of right in the, like in the morning as soon as I wake up. I also have the apple tea tan over here that's gonna be cooling. Um, and I'll take care of that tomorrow after work and flip it over and in the refrigerator we have our cinnamon rolls that are going to be baked tomorrow afterward. Good morning everyone! So as you saw, I just made my coffee. I'm about to head out to work. I took the sourdoughs out and I separated them into two because I'm making two loaves with them. I'm gonna do our final shape and put it in the bannetons. So again, if you wanna see the full recipe for this and the whole method, I do already have a video on how to make my starter and the actual sourdough loaf. Plop it right in. Hi everyone, I'm back from work. All the kids are in the background. I'm gonna be putting my sourdough into the oven to bake. I actually just got a new, um, what is this called? Uh, uh, a new sourdough thing. A sourdough thing. Um, the one who makes the cuts. Oh man, what's the name of it? A, a, um, a layman? Yeah. I don't know, anyways, not sponsored or anything, but it looked really cool, very comfortable to use. So let's get into putting our sourdough in the oven. I'm using the same parchment paper that I used last time. It's still pretty good, so why not? It has been proofing in the refrigerator since the morning. Um, yeah. I've recently learned a new technique with um, preventing your sourdough from like exploding on the top. 
After five minutes of it baking in the oven, I just take it out and I do controlled scoring once again, which makes it look really nice and pretty. While the sourdough is baking, I remove the cinnamon buns from the fridge. So it actually looks great. They puffed up really nicely. Um, and I think it's perfect to, if you want to make fresh cinnamon buns, just do it the night before, pop it in the fridge, covered, and bake it the next day so it's nice and fresh. Look at my gorgeous beauties. You guys, if you make sourdough, you know how much pleasure you get out of a successful sourdough because you put so much effort into it. Oh, look at that. Oh, I am. I am very, very proud. I am so happy. It's a labor of love and I do get so much enjoyment when I make beautiful things and delicious things. So definitely try it out just to get it's like a, i guess it's like an art a way of expressing yourself through food i absolutely love it so these gorgeous cinnamon rolls just came out just check out how soft they are just incredible i'm gonna let that cool a little bit and then add in the cream cheese frosting over the top For the cream cheese frosting that I'll be putting on my cinnamon rolls, this is the brand of cream cheese that I use, it's dairy free. So in here I have one and a half uh, containers of that in here and about one and a half cups of confectioner sugar. I'm gonna mix that really, really well until it becomes nice and creamy. Once it's combined, I added in about four tablespoons of butter or dairy-free butter and about one tablespoon of vanilla and I'm going to mix that again until it's all nice and fluffy. The cinnamon buns have cooled slightly to the touch. Now's the perfect time to glaze them. What I actually like to do is actually pop them into the oven right before serving and then glaze them so it's nice and fresh but for the purposes of youtube i just wanted to show you how i would do it now that the kids are sleeping i can finally get cooking i've basically taken vegetables and i've uh, sliced the tops off of these tomatoes. I peeled out the core and the core of the mush of the tomatoes, I'm just plopping it into the actual pot that I'm gonna be cooking in, um, cooking all of the vegetables in. So I have some meat in here, the uh, tomato puree that I took the pulp out. I'm gonna be adding in a few tablespoons of oil and I'm gonna be finishing up doing the same exact thing with this zucchini. I'm gonna cut it into, depending on the size of your zucchini, it'll vary. I'm cutting mine into three different um, sections using a not such a sharp knife. I'm gonna be just taking all of the insides out like so until you are left with something like this. Nice and hollow for the filling to go into. The vegetables have all been sliced up and peeled and cleaned out. I'm preparing my station. I have some parsley here, some ground beef, one cup of rice that I've already pre-washed and the pot with some tomatoes that I'll be placing everything into. Now to make the filling, I'm going to food process one tomato, one onion and one apple. So I'll get all of that cleaned up and place that into my food processor. Now it's time to make our filling. So I put in all of the meat, the ground meat. I have no idea how much, what is that? Pound and a half, two pounds, I can never tell the size of it. These are all the pureed, this is the apple, onion, and tomato that's been pureed. My one cup of short grain raw uh, rice and the parsley that I've chopped up. This is so flavorful, so delicious. Uh, the reason why I add an apple into the filling, a lot of people ask me, 
it's because it creates a lot of um, moisture in the filling and it makes it not hard so it becomes soft i add in about two teaspoons of salt into the filling and about one teaspoon of black pepper i'm also going to be using about a quarter cup of tomato sauce in here this is my favorite brand i feel like it's just so so delicious using a gloved hand i'm going to be mixing the entire filling until everything is incorporated and then we're going to fill each and every single one of these vegetables so we take one of our vegetables and we just simply stuff it until nothing can be stuffed inside and we place it down into the pot Actually, I do like to add in some tomato sauce on the bottom. I like it saucy. Okay, so about this much. As you see, all of the vegetables have been stuffed. I'm going to top everything off with a good amount of tomato sauce right over the top. And then I'm gonna fill it halfway up with water. I'm not going to put in too much water because these vegetables themselves will start to release their own juices and we don't want this to become soup. So just, I don't know if you can tell just halfway up like that. I have the fire on the highest flame over there trying to make it come to a boil. And I'm gonna cover it with the lid, just leaving a little bit open. This is going to cook for at least two hours. The longer this cooks, the tastier it will be. Now I'll be sharing with you how I make my stuffed chicken. You're gonna see that I do not stuff it with stuffing, which is very untraditional, I guess. I just, uh, my family doesn't enjoy mushy stuffing that's been inside. So I place it into a, um, a pan, it gets nice and crispy and very, very delicious. But first, let me show you the recipe for the stuffed chicken. If you haven't seen last year's Rosh Hashanah meal plan and meal prep video, definitely check it out. I made the same recipe using a duck and here I am doing the exact same thing using a chicken so take your favorite types of fruits i'm using a red apple green apple oranges and some figs i'm going to be stuffing all of that into the chicken i season the chicken like i normally would anytime i'm making it for shabbat so just some salt black pepper paprika and some chicken seasoning over the top i then stuff the chicken with the oranges different apples and celery as you i'm going to be showing you right now i place all of the other fruits all around the chicken as well i'm going to be glazing the top of the chicken with pomegranate sauce and some soy sauce the pomegranate sauce and the soy sauce is going to add a nice dark and rich color to the chicken once that is nice and glazed and i've mixed it all through i'm going to just be topping the entire top of it with some cilantro you can definitely skip this step or add parsley instead i then spray in some oil over the top cover it with parchment paper and then the foil just because i don't want the foil to be touching the actual food and i'm going to just be baking it I put it into a preheated oven set at 400 degrees, covered for one hour, and then later on, I'll be uncovering it, basting it, and placing it back in the oven to get that deep golden rich color. Many of you always request to see how I plate everything and how I would showcase this on my Shabbat tables or my holiday tables. So here it is. Here is a little snippet of how I would do this.
Now for the stuffing, I'm gonna use two stalks of celery, one onion, and 16 ounces of white mushrooms that I'm gonna be slicing thinly. Into a skillet, I'm gonna be placing in about three tablespoons of oil, and I'm gonna saute the onions and the celery. You can definitely add in some garlic, which I think I just might do, uh, but I'm gonna add that at the very end so that it doesn't burn. Whenever I chop up mushrooms or use them in a recipe, I always remember watching um, shows on cooking and how they always said you don't need to wash your mushrooms because they absorb tons of water. You just need to wipe them with a damp cloth. And every time I go in to look at a mushroom and to cook with it, I just I don't understand how you can not wash it. It's so filthy dirty. I think I made a video one time about like a mushroom soup and I mentioned that. And so many of you commented that you also have to wash your mushrooms. So I just find it funny whenever I do mushrooms and recipes. I don't know how people just wipe them with a the cloth. There's just, there's dirt there. And I don't care, I guess, how much water the mushrooms will absorb. I'd rather eat clean mushrooms. I did just add four large cloves of garlic in here. This already smells so, so good. Now that the onions are caramelizing a little bit, I'm going to drop in the mushrooms and season everything up. So to season everything well, I have one tablespoon of the chicken seasoning, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of black pepper. Everything is going to wilt down and become really, really tiny. So I'm going to just let it do its thing. You probably hear the sizzling of the vegetables with the uh, filling sauteing. So I have these two baguettes that I bought from Aldi yesterday. I'm going to be chopped. I already baked them. I like crispened them up a little bit. And now I'll be just cutting them into cubes. I just placed the bread to toast up a little bit so it could be a little bit more drier. So it's perfect right now. I'm gonna be adding in the mushroom stuffing that we made right over the top. And I'm just gonna add in a little bit of chicken broth with a bunch of parsley that I have chopped up. So you're looking for the stuffing not to be too mushy and not too watery. Just gonna cover it with uh, foil for 25 minutes and then uncover it and place it back in the oven at 400 degrees for another 20 minutes until it crispens up. The stuffing is now done and it looks amazing. I just topped it with some more fresh parsley and dill and it's gonna be great. The next recipe that we'll be doing are these Brussels sprouts. So I've already washed them, cleaned them. Um, I'm going to be adding in some olive oil, salt and black pepper and roasting them in the oven. And when they're going to be done, we're gonna make a balsamic honey glaze to go over the top of it. It's gonna be nice and crispy and delicious. I'm going to be roasting them in the oven at 425 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes until they're nice and crispy. The Brussels sprouts are ready and to finish it off, 
I'm going to be adding in balsamic vinegar to the top as well as some honey. Gonna drizzle on just a tad bit more of olive oil and it's all done. I just boiled these red skin and white skin potatoes for about 20 minutes until they're fork tender. Now I'm either, you could either use like a, the back of a, a cup or I have this device here that I'm just going to be pushing down like so. These are basically called smashed potatoes. They're full of flavor, you season them with some. Um, olive oil, salt and black pepper, and they come out amazing. <laughs> Shy? Yum. <laughs> mm, Shy is drooling already. I have one now. Mm -hmm. That looks great. To season it, I'm going to be placing in some olive oil over the top. Guys, are you noticing I'm using olive oil now? <laughs> um, I posted on Instagram that I want to start using less vegetable oil because it's toxic and not healthy and all of that. And I asked for all of yours recommendations and I think the number one choice was the Kirkland brand. So that is what I got. And surprisingly, I'm actually liking it. I'm very, very picky with my olive oils. I, they tend to have this like weird, distinct aftertaste. Um, so I just always stayed away from it. But I actually liked it this time. So I seasoned the potatoes heavily with salt and black pepper. And I'm gonna bake it in a 450 degree oven and flip them halfway so that both sides are nice and crispy. I also just boiled some corn on the cobs. Separately, I'm making um, this butter herb, uh, I guess, topping over it. Some salt and black pepper is gonna go over the top. I mush everything around and put it over the hot corn. How gorgeous does this look? I wonder if garlic would go nicely here. Would you put garlic on corn? Shy. Yeah. You would? Uh -huh. Really, really happy with how this corn came out. I was thinking of even adding crushed garlic to it. Let me know if you think that is a good idea. I'm not sure. Maybe it would be too much. Now it's time to plate the apple tea tan. Just sliding my knife through to loosen everything up so nothing gets stuck when we're transferring it over. Okay, moment of truth. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Wow, look how gorgeous. It is absolutely 
absolutely stunning. It came out so good. Look at all of that caramelization. Ah, cannot wait to dive into it. Let's just poke it. Gosh, yum. The stuffed vegetables are all done. I plated them really nicely here on this plate. And of course, you have to, have to, have to garnish. <laughs> Otherwise, it will not be the same. I also have my mashed potatoes here. I'm just gonna garnish them as well while we're at it. They came out nice and crispy. Oh yeah, that looks good. They came out super, super crispy. I'm gonna try one for a Mmm. Oh gosh. I don't know if you guys heard that. It is absolutely delicious. These would go perfectly with some garlic right over the top with dill as well. But I'm gonna do that right before serving. I'm just plating it for you just to get a sense of what it would look like. I wanted to give you a quick sneak peek into our Thanksgiving tablescape. I started the whole process and my oldest daughter helped me with the whole entire setting. So it was a joint effort. I love how everything turned out. I played on the gold theme and I chose the centerpiece to just be florals that I already had in the home. I decorated everything with pumpkins, apples, and oranges to keep in with the green and orange theme. I plated everything just for you to get a sense of what it would look like. We actually had this entire meal this past Shabbat, so nothing went to waste. This is just what we would do if we would be hosting Thanksgiving. And I hope you guys all enjoyed all of these yummy, delicious recipes. And if you did, I would so appreciate it if you would give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this. If you'd like to see more inspiration for Thanksgiving, I do have a few videos videos up that I'll link in the description box below. Happy prepping and happy Thanksgiving from my family to yours.